Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of Bucket Coding. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to add your own items to Minecraft. Up until now, as you know, it has not been possible to create your own items. You have been able to uh, create an item and rename it, and then use a player interact event to check if it's being used, and then you could also have a texture pack if this were on a server, rather resource pack, if this were on a server or locally, and then you could use that to reskin the item. But today I'm going to show you how to actually create your own custom items that will actually show up in Minecraft as its own item, not just a retextured, you know, other item that you already have. Now, uh, this is possible to a few uh, due to a few hours of hard work that I put in um, over the last weekend. Um, it is uh, I will spare you the details. Very complicated. Um, took a long time and it has lots of you know NMS and packet hacks and whatever. But it does actually work very well. So what we're going to do is we're going to add um, a block called Twenty Ninium, or really it's an element, but in block form we're going to add this block into the game so it appears it's its own block and can actually be used for building. Uh, and again, please note that this is very um, early in uh, creation, so you can't really do too much with, uh, it's called Custom Items API, that's what I've named it for now. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you need the actual image. I've gone ahead and created um, an image right here. Um, it's 16 pixels by 16 pixels, and then it's basically just like a little blue um, background, and then it says 29 in orange. So you're going to want to take this and drag it into SRC so that it's right where the plugin.yml is, and that's very important that it's in the same place as the plugin.yml. The next thing that you're going to want to do is, down in the description, download the um, custom items API that I have provided. Uh, then you're going to want to, properties, build path, and add external jars. And you're going to want to take the custom items API that I've made and make sure it's in your build path so you can actually use it. So um, what we're going to go ahead and do is when a player joins the server, we're going to give them one block of 20 ninium. So the way that you're going to do this is you're going to write um, custom item item is equal to new custom item. The first, and now this takes three parameters. The first parameter you give it, and you can go ahead and import it, me.pokes629.dev.customitemsapi.customitem. The first, um, item that it takes, or the first uh, parameter, is the name, so we're going to call it 20nium. The second is an item type, which comes from an enumerator that I've created. The choices are block, which represents a block, like dirt or um, sand or whatever. Decoration, which, rec which uh, is basically a block that can be placed, but it's not a block. It's like, you know, a flower or something that can be placed but um, can be passed through. It's just a decoration. And then an item is something that can't be placed like armor or tools that you would just actually uh, use. So it's going to be the type block and then you need to actually pass it the image. Now for now, uh, you pass it the one side and it automatically wraps that for all of the sides. Eventually I could add it where you pass it, you know, different images for different sides. But you want to go ahead and type in the name of the image, and again, since that image is at the same place as the plugin.yml, it can be accessed by custom um, item, custom items API. So you got to make sure that you spell that right, or else, of course, it won't work. And you got to make sure that you have the image, and you want it to be 16 pixels by 16 pixels. If you take a look inside of the item class, you'll see that there are a couple of um, methods, just the getters for whatever you pass, you know, the image which returns the path to the image, uh, the name, or, you know, whatever image you give it there, the name, and then the item type, and then the other method is to item stack, which returns an item stack representation of the item. So, of course, you would want to use that when doing something with the player's inventory or, you know, checking for, you know, type or, you know, whatever. So you would want to use that to item stack method. So you're going to say e.getPlayer dot get inventory dot add item item dot to item stack and then since that returns type item stack that should work out just fine 
Everything else looks good. The event is being registered. We have the image in the correct place, and that should all work. So let's go ahead and actually export this and give it a try. Let's go ahead and start it up in terminal just to make sure that there's no errors on load if I accidentally made a mistake. And everything looks good. Let's go ahead oops, and actually start up Minecraft now to log in and grab some 20 ninium. All right, so hang on one second. We are waiting for this. Looks like it's updating for something, not sure. And we are about in. So let's go ahead and go join the local host server, put it in full screen, and let's take a look. All right, so the join method didn't work. It's weird. Let's, uh, oh my. Let's, uh, quickly take a, oh, looks like we got something. Let's read through the stack trace. Hang on one second. It's an event exception. Ah, uh, there it is. The cause was an April Fool's exception. This isn't real. That's right, guys. This uh, was my attempt at an April Fool's joke. Uh, custom items API is not real. All the two item stack method does is just uh, throw an April Fool's exception, which I've actually created. It doesn't do anything. Um, I just thought it would be funny to kind of get in on the April Fool's a little bit. So, um,. That's all for this video. Of course, uh, it's not possible yet. Maybe in the future, we'll just have to see. So, as always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn, but also let me know for how long I was able to trick you. If you had a sneaking suspicion when you first saw the title, uh, let me know. But also, maybe if I got you up until that April Fool's exception that we found, uh, make sure to let me know as well. Um, and if you like this video, click the like button. I will see you guys soon with the next actual episode of Bucket Coding that we, we learn something real and not just uh, have an April Fool's joke. See you guys soon. Bye.